I think the first thing I remember was arriving at the school. I'm not staying on site, so I was feeling really apprehensive, really nervous, a bit stressed that people might have started bonding before me. And I remember walking into the school and the first person I saw was Jan. And I recognized him from the photos and I just remember saying like, hi, is this for Loka Yoga? And he was like, yes, welcome. And the first thing he did was give me a huge hug. And that already just like alleviated my fears about what it was gonna be like and all my nerves. And it was just a really welcoming presence already. Um, I remember walking into the, the retreat area or Bali Harmony Resort and seeing this buzz of activity and people that were going to be in my class with me and just immediately everyone was all smiles, high energy. I remember seeing Taryn and she was really busy working with other things and I was a bit nervous and then when she saw me, she again just gave me this huge smile and was just so welcoming and said, we only do hugs here, let's do hugs here. And I just immediately felt so, so safe and so comfortable and already felt like I was gonna be in a really loved environment. I think with schools, when I was doing my research, there were so many other schools that I was looking at in Bali. Initially, I was looking at schools in Ubud and then I had to really sit down and think about what I wanted to get out of a school, what was important to me, the things that I would value. And for me, it was quality instruction, small group sizes, and a focus on the spirituality of yoga because it's something that it's hard to learn. I think when it comes to philosophy and spirituality, you can read about it online, but it's a very different feeling being around people who live it, who truly can speak from experience and from the heart. And I knew I couldn't get that kind of experience online or through books. I had to be with people who lived and breathed everything about yoga, spirituality, yoga philosophy. And that's what I was getting from the reviews. And so initially, even though I wanted to go to Ubud, I was like, I have to go to Changu because this is where Loka is. And this is the school I want to go to. And it changed even my timeline for my travels because I had initially wanted to start a yoga teacher school in October. And I pushed it to September because this was the last slot available. And I knew I wanted to do it. When you go to these schools and you see how many 200 hours there are. Sometimes it's easy to be a bit jaded. Um, I remember thinking like, is this just gonna be rote? Where is it just going to be like them getting another batch of students and it's just, you know, things on autopilot. And it wouldn't be the same experience. We're the last batch of the year. Are they just gonna be exhausted and over it and it's just gonna be going through the curriculum? And I think it became really, really clear in the welcoming ceremony that that was not going to be the case at all. I think you can't, you can't force and you can't fake genuine, authentic care. You can't fake just passion for yoga. You can't fake passion for teaching. You can't fake love. It just became super apparent immediately that I had made the right decision. And something that Taryn said at the opening ceremony was, um, this will be a life-changing experience if you want it to be. And I remember in my head saying, I'm going to make this a life-changing experience. And just from the first day, I could already feel it. I already knew that that was exactly what it was going to be. And every single day, I, my expectations were just blown. I can't imagine having picked another school. I can't recommend Loka highly enough. It's just, I can't imagine my friends wanting to do another school. I'll be really upset. <laughs> I just think this has been a irreparable experience. And I don't think this would have happened. I won't be feeling this way. Um, if it weren't for me coming here. I feel like I started yoga relatively late or recently. I got into yoga more seriously during COVID in 2020. And I was doing yoga almost every single day, but this was during COVID. So I got no hands-on adjustments. And the studios I, were, I was going to, we had to wear masks and there was no touching. And they were big studios as well. The classes were about 30 people. And because I was so new to yoga and so timid and so scared, I was always at the back because I just didn't want to embarrass myself. And people were doing handstands and things during you know, yogi free time. And I had no idea how to do anything or what to do. And so yoga was pretty intimidating for me. And I, I, because of my job, I had to drop off my practice a bit. And I picked it up again, I would say within the last year. That's when I started doing a lot of um, yoga on YouTube, mainly following yoga classes online. So I never really knew if what I was doing was right. I never really knew if my alignment was what it was supposed to be. 
I, I never knew if my alignment was correct. And because I had gotten into yoga because I wanted to heal from an injury, it felt doubly important for me to be in a school like Loka where it was small group settings where I felt like I could get one-on-one -on -one attention in understanding how my body was supposed to be, um, if I was doing something correctly. Because not, not only was it important for my own practice, just feeling confident and knowing that what I'm doing is correct, also, if I'm trying to teach or trying to impart wisdom into other people, it was really important for me, especially if they were coming to yoga with an injury and they wanted to use this time to heal and strengthen their body, that I was helping them or enabling them to do that properly and correctly so that they could feel confident in their bodies and also with continuing their practice further on. So for me, especially the, the posture lab workshop was just so vital for me to feel confident in what I was doing and also just feel confident in how things were supposed to look and feel and how I would help someone get into that right posture, that right alignment. In addition to that, I never studied anatomy and coming to yoga from place of injury, that was something that was just massively important to me. I had lower back pain that was like quite severe to the point where I couldn't sit down on the floor with my legs straight out at one point. And it was so interesting to learn about just the body, the nerves, the fact that maybe I would always get down on myself for the fact that I could never do the splits, even as a competitive figure skater. I did ballet for a number of years. I could never ever do the splits. And I would always get so down on myself. It was a great way to just learn about my body, learn about my limitations, and also just learn to be more compassionate to myself and my body and carry that compassion to other people who might be coming to yoga with a limited understanding of their body, their anatomy, um, how that all flows. And I think in addition to that, Jan was so generous with his time. I feel like during our anatomy workshops, we all had so many questions that would verge on the tangent of personal questions. It was a really great way to tie anatomy to your personal experience because it sits in so much more when you have that, when you have that personal connection to it. And I'm really grateful we had that experience because otherwise it just seems like a lecture from a university and it doesn't have that personal touch and you don't, the lessons don't sink in as deeply. Um, so that was hugely interesting for me. I called my mom after to ask about the heart and to tell her about it. And it was something I knew I wanted to get out of my, my yoga teacher training and I'm so glad that it happened in the way it did. And then from the other component, um, just yoga philosophy, Alka was just incredible. And it's hard to describe to my friends who ask about why the yoga philosophy section has been just a transformative experience, not just for myself, but for other students. Because a lot of these things I feel like we talk about, if I have read them before, I have heard other people say it, they're things that I believe in myself. But it's really hard sometimes when life happens that you get lost and when you're reading Instagram memes or quotes that are thrown at you with a one-off and there's no bigger holistic picture, there's no bigger connection, it's easy to just see these as throwaway comments and quotes and it's harder for it to sink into your life. But I think coming to philosophy in, firstly, in a really holistic way where we're doing yoga and yoga itself is such a meditative spiritual practice and then we're having these larger conversations that are built around themes. It, these things that we talk about have really sunk into me so much more. Even just for me, the concept of non-attachment, just letting things be as they are, being present in the moment, not getting, not building expectations that will lead to disappointment. I remember the first day being told, pick a new place to put your mat down because that way you're not creating attachment, you're not creating expectation where you're disappointed if someone takes your mat because they got there first. Um, and the first week, it was really challenging because I would pre-plan exactly where I wanted my mat. I would have my mat in the corner um, in, the, in the morning and then in the afternoon I'd say, okay, today like, I want my morning or my afternoon practice, I want my mat to be in the front row on the left hand side instead. And I would come at these trying to pre-plan my non-attachment and I noticed by the second week that I just, I, I had lost all of that, which was just such a nice refreshing thing to see that just daily reminders, our daily conversations really do have a bearing on how we act on and off the mat. Um, 
and it's been amazing. It's been an amazing chance to just also connect with my, with my. I don't know if I should call them batchmates, but people in my in my class. I think Alco creates just safe space for us all to be so vulnerable, to really dig deep, um, to think about questions that we've not asked ourselves, asked our friends, and I think for me it's brought such a deep connection to people who were strangers just four weeks ago. And I feel like I know them closer than I do some of my own friends because we have a deeper connection. We're, we've been asked and we've dug deep into our soul. And we're really, we've become kindred spirits. And I think that happens with just that perfect alchemy of great teacher, amazing questions, and a really safe, supportive environment to really share and be yourself and to probe deeper. I came to LOCA not to become a teacher. That was not my intention. I think my intention initially was I was getting really into yoga and I wanted to be better. I have this competitive fire in me where I just, like I want to be better with my handstands. I want to be able to do pincha. I want to be able to do the splits. And that was my goal. I, you know, I was a little bit lost with what I was doing. I was feeling a bit unproductive and unmotivated and I was, thinking I could just channel all my energy into yoga and just get better from purely an athletic competitive point of view. And I really just had no desire really to teach at all. And I think as a testament to how amazing the school is, it's like within the first week, I remember calling home thinking, I need to teach, like I need to teach because what I've already gained from this experience, just this peace and this calmness I felt in my soul, just based off of the classes, the philosophy, just my interactions with my peers and how much lighter I could already feel that I was becoming and how transformative it was already feeling to my mental health, my state of mind. I just remember thinking I have to, I have to somehow capture all of these things that I've learned and share them with people, share it with my friends, share it with strangers who might in, hopefully in some small way benefit from this. And I think that's just the strongest testament I can really give to this experience is that I came to be better physically and I've not only just become stronger physically, more aware and in tune with my emotions emotionally, but also I've just discovered this really, really deep love for all the lessons I've learned and I just have this deep desire to help people the same way that I feel like this experience has helped me. I can't, I really can't imagine having picked another school and having come away with this same feeling. Maybe I would have gone to another school and I would have become stronger or, you know, I would have had the same benefits physically as coming to LOCA, but it's given me much more than I had expected and it's given me the gift of wanting to give. And I think that's the biggest gift you can have in life is just to give and help and impact other people. I'm getting like goosebumps just thinking about it. I feel like I, I can encapsulate any emotion stronger than the fact that the school has given me this desire to give. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. <laughs>